There I am, standing on the edge of a wild and crazy land. The country stretching before me is incomprehensibly fluted, convoluted, contorted, and distorted. Remote beyond remote, the trappings of modern humanity are nowhere in sight. The sun is low in the eastern sky, creating an almost mystical glow across the sandstone horizon. I am hypnotized. The beauty increases with each step. The landscape overwhelms me with its power, envelops me with a presence I cannot see. The hair literally stands up on my arms. Then, then, I wake up. I saw it first in my dreams. When I finally entered the actual place for the first time, I realized that my imagination was woefully inadequate in capturing reality. We were entering one of the most magnificent landscapes on the planet. We dropped down into a maze of variegated sandstone that was so beautiful and felt so holy that we actually had to stop multiple times to wipe the tears from our eyes so we could see well enough to not walk over the edge. Two miles later, totally in love with the world surrounding us, we read these prophetic words in our little guidebook. Paul's here. Memorize what you see, so you'll know where to exit upon your return. What followed was a dazzling array of side canyons coming in from all directions. Deciding which ones to explore and which to skip was an impossible task. Each was more inviting than the last, and once we discovered our first ruin, we could not help but look for more in each direction. We took in a wall of white pictographs unlike any I had ever seen. I could not stop staring at one that pictured four people, a family maybe, holding hands. We found this stunning arch. We entered another slot canyon. We were overwhelmed by the sheer volume of beauty. What we did not discover were other people. Finally, after a full day of constant walking in beauty, falling in love with one landscape after the next, we knew that we too had to turn around if we were going to get out of this maze of seduction before nightfall. But as my watch suggested, we were nearing the place where the guidebook said, memorize what you see, we realized something. As dusk was swiftly approaching, the light changed the view of the canyon so much that nothing looked like the slot we had come down early that morning. We wandered up our best guess, and my heart quickened a mile later when I realized that this could not possibly be right. We retraced our steps and tried again. Nope. We tried one more time, and it felt very wrong again. After the initial wave of panic calmed, the reality of our situation began to sink in. Even one night out here with no blankets would be precarious at best. And with our remaining water, we certainly could not survive more than three days tops. The feelings that become most prevalent at such a moment center around the fragility of life and the vulnerability of solitary humans in a massive desert maze of endless twisting canyons. You can cognitively know that we are all powerless against the vastness of an unforgiving wilderness. But when you feel that in your gut, it is a way different thing. Make a mistake out here and the turkey vultures will thank you. That is a lesson in humility that is difficult to miss. The necessity of wilderness is not just about human solace and renewal. It is not just about preserving these places for humans in the future. It is not just a respite from this crazy broken world of ours. It is not just about the human need for adventure. It is not just about what we must do if we are going to prevent another virus from jumping from wildlife to the human population. 
We need wilderness because it reminds us of our insignificance in the grand scheme of things. We need wilderness because it knocks us off our arrogant high horse. When we backtracked a fourth time and headed up another canyon, we realized about a third of the way up that we were ascending and ascending in generally the right direction. Even if we were not going to exit in the same place we entered, we knew we would find our way out of this wilderness. We knew this was not our day to feed the turkey vultures. Just as the first stars appeared, we ascended the last wall, leg shaking with fatigue. As we walked the last half mile, we thanked God for a wilderness that was so beautiful it made us weep for a wilderness so perilous that it could have also killed us. We thanked God for this wilderness that taught us about being fully human and accepting ourselves for the susceptible creatures we are and the humble creatures we had become.